What is pergola wind rating? I'm Brendan from theluxurypergola.com. We get asked all the time what wind ratings mean, what is needed, and see a lot of confusion about what kind of standards are out there. Unfortunately, this confusion is capitalized on by less than scrupulous companies. In this video, we will go over one, what pergola wind ratings mean, two, how to find the wind rating for various pergola products, three, how to see what kind of wind load requirements are needed for your location, and four, how some companies game their wind ratings to look way better than they actually are. Unfortunately, this leaves potential customers high and dry when it comes to selling their home or trying to get permits because the product they bought doesn't meet basic minimums and can cause more problems down the road. As a caveat, we at the Luxury Pergola have our own motorized pergola that we are very proud of. Throughout this video, I'll endeavor to be as objective as possible. Although many different pergola options don't meet any building codes, that isn't to say they don't have their place in the market and can offer a less expensive shade solution for those who just need a quick solve. These customers don't necessarily see the product as an investment, since it's highly unlikely that they will see any return on investment in appreciated home value with that type of product. Now that that is out of the way, let's start with point number one. What do pergola wind ratings mean? The wind rating is how much wind a particular structure can take in gusts and not be compromised structurally. These wind ratings are generally pegged to the International Building Code Standard, or IBC. There will be a link in the description where you can see a map of the IBC standard wind minimums in the continental United States. As you can see in the map shown, the absolute lowest wind rating required is 90 miles per hour, which is on the extreme coast of California. Previously, the minimum was 70 miles per hour in this area when they were under the Uniform Building Code in 1997. For a traditional pergola with an open slat design, the calculations are basically how much wind these things can take before being compromised. Things can get tricky with luxury pergolas or pergolas that open and close. Since the structure can be open with sun and wind passing through or completely closed like a solid roof, you may ask, which roof setup gets the wind rating? Obviously, with everything closed tight, you will get a lot more resistance and the wind load the product can withstand will be less. But with the roof open and less resistance to wind pressure, the wind load can be much higher. Which wind rating is the one to go by then? Every single building authority, permitting office, and engineer with any kind of scruples, will tell you that the only thing that matters is the wind load when the roof is closed. It is frankly dishonest to talk about wind rating with the roof open, since if you tried to get it permitted or sell your house with that number, you'd get laughed out of the room. Now, that isn't to say these products are completely worthless. They can be a great, inexpensive option for those who don't have the money for a nicer unit and just need something to keep the sun off. You might need to replace it every few years, but there are many customers who are completely fine with that value proposition, and there are plenty of great solutions out there. Second, how to find the wind rating for various products. This should be visible on the product page of the company's website. For example, with the luxury pergola, if you click on a pergola, scroll down to product specifications, you can see the wind load. Now, sometimes you'll get two numbers, one with the louvers or roof open, and one with them closed. We've already gone over how the louvers open doesn't really mean anything aside from marketing speak. Sometimes the wind load ratings will be buried elsewhere on the product page or in a PDF download. And sometimes they'll change the ratings from miles per hour to kilometers per hour or even knots. Just hop on Google and convert to the units that you want so you can see the wind load. It may take some extra research with some options, but the information should be out there. And if it isn't, that is a big red flag. Third, how do you find the wind load requirement for your area? With a solid structure, whether freestanding or attached to the house, you need to meet the wind loads in your area. It's pretty easy to figure out for most people. Just go to hazards.atcouncil.org and enter the zip code in the box shown. The link to this resource will be in the description. After you enter your zip code, you're going to get a lot of numbers. What you want to look for is ASCE 7-10 risk category two. So for this zip code, for the minimum wind load for risk category two is 115 miles an hour. Now, some building authorities may use slightly different standards, like Miami-Dade County, and have their own numbers. But this can be a good starting point to get a good range. If a building authority does use a different number, it is almost always higher than the one shown here. So this can be a great resource when doing your research on what product is right for you, but is by no means the only thing you need to look at. Last but not least, how some companies game their wind ratings to look way better than they actually are. We've already gone over how the easiest way to game the numbers is by just giving a different one with the louvers or roof open. Despite being the most obvious one to catch, 
it is not nearly the most common. The easiest way to improve your wind ratings is to just change the standard you use. So with a pergola that opens or closes, a big part of the calculation is how much the louvers or slats bend when under load, as well as how much the frame flexes and moves. Usually the slats or louvers bend first before the frame starts to move, so let's stick with that. I'm gonna go into some drug in here and do my best to explain how this works. So feel free to rewind or leave comments if you have any clarifying questions. All right, let's start the jargon. So, when the roof panels flex or bend up and down under particularly heavy gust, that is called deflection. So deflection equals how much the louvers bend up and down. The typical standard in most building codes for deflection is L over 180. L is the length of the louver or slat in inches, then divide that by 180, and that tells you how much the louver is allowed to bend under maximum load and still meet engineering requirements. That is the standard we use at the luxury pergola. Now, let's say I wanted to improve the stated wind load without changing the product at all. What I would do, is just change my standard to L over 60. So length of the slat or louver divided by 60. Boom, I just relaxed my engineering standard by three times and improved my wind rating. So regardless of what someone says their wind rating is, it is always a good idea to ask what deflection standard was used. If it is L over 180 on a 12 foot louver, that means it'll deflect a little over three quarters of an inch under 130 mile per hour winds, and that's for the luxury pergola. If we decide to change our standard to L over 60, we could do two things. One, make the louver thinner and save money while allowing for almost two and a half inches of deflection, or we could allow for two and a half inches of deflection with our existing louver and just claim a higher wind load. The problem with allowing that much deflection, however, is that rain can get through, or you can cause a lot of permanent damage to the louvers and the frame of the unit. All right, that was a lot of information. Hopefully it all made sense, and feel free to leave comments asking any clarifying questions you may have or anything that may have been left out. Feel free to check us out at theluxurypergola.com and give us a call if you have any questions. Again, I'm Brendan at theluxurypergola.com. Thanks for watching.